in the world of android phones there's a lot of choice but if you're after flagship power without the price tag of the ultra premium models and a sensibly sized device with good cameras there are two phones that stand out the samsung galaxy s23 and the google pixel 8 but which is the best i'm ali from 5m tech and in this video i'm going to tell you So design first, regular smartphones these days are just rectangle slabs made of metal and glass, right? Well, yeah, there is that. And when you reduce it down to the basics, that's what we have here. But look a bit closely, hold them in your hand and use them. And there's a definite difference to using the two phones. The thing that strikes the senses first is how much slimmer smaller and more portable the galaxy s23 is it makes the pixel look like an unwieldy chunk by comparison it's almost a millimeter and half thinner and it's four millimeters shorter crucially it's more than 20 grams lighter all of that makes a difference is the difference between feeling like you have a small compact phone and not Still, if you ask me to pick a phone based poorly on looks and being completely subjective, the pixel design language is more attractive. And where the Galaxy design is a bit plain, Google's phone has a clear identity thanks to the camera bar across the back and radius of the curve around the corners. Galaxy gets marks for skinny bezels which are still stand out in the world of Android phones for being uniform all the way around, from all the way around all four sides. What about durability? here there's not much to separate them both are water resistant to the same ip68 levels which means you can submerge them in water up to 1.5 meters deep or at least that's what they've been tested to they're also built from sturdy aluminium and gorilla glass victors although here samsung has the newer second generation glass and armor aluminium for slightly better scratch and impact resistance for those reasons alone ping my aesthetic preferences aside the Galaxy design is objectively better since it's smaller, more compact, thinner, lighter and technically a little more durable. When it comes to the displays on the front, there's not much to separate the two panels on these two flagship Android phones. The Samsung is 6.1 inches, the Pixel 6.2 inches and both are AMOLED or OLED panels with up to 120Hz refresh rates both have high brightness capabilities too so didn't tend to struggle at all to see them even in bright outdoor daylight conditions typical brightness on samsung is 1200 nits pixel is 1400 nits peak brightness is 1750 nits on galaxy 2000 nits on cosmos nits on pixel and for those unsure those are very high numbers for displays and mean they're both really bright Color reproduction is slightly different on them though, but again, this isn't something I'd base a purchasing decision on unless you're really specific about your display tests. Both displays are punchy, bright displays with great contrast and deep black levels. There is a slight difference in tone with the pixel seeming a little warmer most of the time and the Samsung a little more contrasty and saturated, but there's not a huge amount in this. Both are perfectly good for watching your favorite shows on social videos on. Samsung does give you visibility, a bit more flexibility when it comes to tuning the white balance and colors, but that's about it. Let's switch to top performance and there's a slight difference in approach from Samsung and Pixel. Samsung has the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor, Pixel has the Google Mate Tensor G3. They are not far off each other in terms of our peak power, but the Snapdragon is just that bit more beefy. Not that it matters too much in everyday usage. Because they both have those 100Hz displays, they both have that fluid, sharp and responsive feeling when you're scrolling through the user interface. Loading apps and games is similar as well and not different enough to affect any buying decisions. At least not to my mind, Google's chip has been designed to make the AI-powered software elements run smoothly and efficiently. As for battery life, that's pretty interesting because the Pixel has the larger capacity. It's 4,575 mAh versus 3,900 mAh in favor of the Google phone, 
of the Google phone. However, because of various software optimizations and the efficiency of the Snapdragon processor, they both deliver very similar battery life in everyday usage. You shouldn't find either strummels to make it through a full workday. Go with both phones with my own particular usage, which is pretty moderate and usually totals around three hours of screen usage spread between browsing, gaming, social media and video watching. I can finish the day with more than 30% left over. If I'm traveling and listening to music while constantly switching between 4G and 5G masts en route, that obviously changes and on those types of days, I can get below 20%. But short version of both of them, it actually seemed the S23 III was the one that could last a little while longer despite the smaller battery size. Both can charge wirelessly and or relatively quickly with a charger, but not anywhere near as fast as the likes of OnePlus and Xiaomi phones. If you're familiar with the strengths and weaknesses of the Pixel and Samsung cameras, the differences between them in pretty much any condition won't come as any surprise to you. In fact, if you're familiar, you'll likely be able to tell which is which just by looking at them side by side by side. But there is a hardware difference in that Samsung has a dedicated zoom lens alongside the primary camera and ultra wide camera. Pixel just has the primary and ultra wide but you can zoom in 2x at the tap of a button and get a good zoomed in shot without any real lack in detail. So how do they compare? Well, for the most part, Samsung has this tendency to push contrast quite high. So you'll find some of the bright highlights in images sometimes blow out a bit more and the darker elements also get crushed a little. Where Pixel tends to handle those contrasting light and dark parts a bit better. Pixel evens those out so you get decent texturing highlights and shadows. When you combine that high contrast look from Samsung with its other tendency which is to oversaturate colors you end up with a picture that looks quite unrealistic. So sure the picture will have impact when you look at it and share it on social media but I am personally not a big fan of that oversaturated high contrast image style. And it's there even if you switch off the scene optimizer function. In lower light situations where like sunsets and at night time this sometimes means you'll find a bit more noise and graininess in Samsung's photos compared to the pixel. And they tend to lose some of the detail in elements like tree branches, bushes and leaves. As a general field Samsung's Excel's images are different in that Samsung seem brighter, more color rich and contrasty heavy. Pixels are warmer, softer and a bit more natural. Of course, we can't talk camera without discussing some of the AI, AI elements Google software and AI has built into its Photos app. You can do things like pick up subjects, resize them and move them to a different part of the image. You can also change the sky or the water in images if you want to create a completely different shot. Audio Magic Eraser lets you remove background noise from your videos or make your voice clearer. And this aim continues in other areas of the software like the AI wallpaper generator, which can use preset customizable commands to produce new random wallpaper styles whenever you want. Both manufacturers do support you with updates for a long time, but here again Pixel has the upper hand. Google made the outstanding claim that would offer a huge 7 years of updates on the Pixel 8, taking you up to 2030 before you before would no longer get updates. But the Samsung offers update only for 5 years. So the Pixel is winner here. In the end, there are a couple of reasons to pick each phone. For the camera capabilities, AI power, and long software support you have the Google Pixel 8. It's a brilliant choice. In the S23 3's favor, there's the fact it's getting on a bit now, so can be found at prices way below its original retail price. Plus, it's thinner, lighter and easier to hold in one hand. It also has the more efficient, more powerful processor and slightly better battery life. But for me, because of the camera, the long software support the Pixel is the winner. 
what do you think samsung or pixel let me know in the comments and i'll see you again in the next one bye for now